My name is Harrison Tanner. I'm a sculptor. I'm a, an art collector. Um, I'm an art administrator. My whole life has been around the arts. And um, I arrived here in 2002 in the Yukon and was immediately inspired by the landscape and doubly inspired by the characters and the people that I met when I first came to the Yukon, and since then too. What happened was that I ended up uh, becoming sort of a historian up here. There were so many fascinating characters, uh, and, and a lot of them had passed already. And I thought, what a, what a lovely tribute to do uh, the people do some kind of a tribute bust or, or a mask to people who have contributed so much to this amazing territory, the secret gem of, the, of Canada. The project I'm working on right now is a very exciting project. It is the creation of a bust of Leonard Cohen, poet, writer, author, musician, songwriter, um, whose name is known worldwide in, in, in music. Um, many of the songs that he has written uh, have been recorded by uh, different genres, different artists, um, some being country, some being soul, and many of them all the same song. Um, he was a very complex uh, person, uh, which is part of my process, is uh, delving into the, the history and the soul of, of Leonard Cohen. And uh, this did not disappoint. I, I read volumes about Leonard Cohen and the impact that he had on people's music, um, uh, songwriting, um, and also the impact that he had on the, the psyche of the Canadian people. Um, one of his uh, most famous songs was Hallelujah, and it's been recorded hundreds and hundreds of times by many different uh, artists around the world. Uh, the interesting thing I found out about that particular song is that it took him three years to write it, and he actually wrote 23 or 24 verses, um, of which only maybe four or five have ever been recorded. His own recording company said, the song will never sell, uh, which shows you that you're not always right. <laughs> he sold millions of that particular song. Um, anyway, it, uh, it, it, the complexity of the man made the creating of, of his sculpture even more important. Um, being able to interpret some of the sadness and some of the uh, grief that, that he experienced dur during his life was sort of my, uh, my mission when I was doing this, this sculpture. Um, and I did one and uh, Strangely enough, it collapsed, so I redid it uh, at, at the urging of photographer Christian Kuntz, and, um, and this one has turned out beautifully. Um, it reminds me of uh, a commission that I had to do uh, a mask of Albert Einstein, and the collector asked, very importantly, that I try to capture what feelings and what uh, terrible grief he experienced when he realized what was happening to his life's work uh, turned into a, an atomic bomb that would uh, slaughter people. And uh, a great ph photographer had captured that, so was, I was able to work from it. But that was a great lesson leading up to Leonard Cohen where the man had experienced much depression and, and grief and, and loss in his life and, uh, 
and try to interpret that rather than just you know putting a smile on his face uh, made it much more personal from my standpoint. So in terms of um, in terms of how that uh, translates, um, I read as much as I can from various biographies and stories that are out there, and um, and get a sense of of who he was, uh, of his intensity, of his genius mind, where in a, a, a period of three or four years. He wrote two books where he was compared to James Joyce. Uh, he he wrote a, an amazing published book of of poetry that uh, won national awards and acclaim, and created his first full length uh, album in the '60s. And that kind of that kind of genius uh, only comes a few times in our lifetime, especially for creative people that are often tormented when they're at that level. Working with clay, unlike working with hard surface materials like stone where you are digging into the stone to find the person, with clay uh, it's the most elemental material in the world. It's what's in the center of earth. and. Uh, when you work with clay, and in my particular case, I've, um, like every artist, you have your favorite. And I work with paper clay, which uh, uh, has a lot of integrity and and can withstand shrinkage without cracking, and and it can be uh, exposed to the air for long periods of time. Um, I try to find Leonard Cohen in a large ball of clay. And uh, and my purpose is to release him from his coarse bonds. And um, in doing it that way, it uh, at a certain point there's an epiphany moment where you've been working and working and working and you know, putting the the def defined features that are truly Leonard in this case. Um, and trying to put expression into it so that people who are viewing it see a real person in there. And um, in the case of Leonard, it, it, uh, there were so many photographs of him, uh, many of them with hats. Uh, and the original one was done with a hat, but the, the hat sort of took away from from the finished bust, so I decided against doing it this time. Um, but to the the actual construction of it is, I build um, a framework uh, just like you would if you were building a, a building. Uh, only I build that framework out of clay, um, so it's sort of an architectural process then uh, laying slabs of clay over these these different um, uh, structures and allowing them to slowly dry and uh, build up. And you start from the bust and work up. Um, and then you build a structure through the throat and uh, into, the, into the skull itself and uh, shape that and get the proper angle of how you'd like it to uh, how you would like it to uh, be viewed and uh, and then start once you've done that then start on the features uh, the chin uh, the cheekbones uh, the eyes are super important um, uh, from my standpoint uh, the mouth and again, that's where you can really define the character of the of the person you're sculpting. Um, and hair is always interesting. My biggest challenge uh, is always ears. I uh, I can always do the right ear without any problem, but the left ear is a mirror image of the right ear. So uh, it's always a challenge. 
and I have oftentimes spent time in my studio doing 20 or 30 sets of ears just to feel comfortable doing it. Um, you'll notice in, in sculptors that many sculptors have different ways that they create the eyes in their sculpture. Some of them are uh, blank, uh, some of them are hollow, uh, others try to totally replicate the, uh, the eyeball and the iris and, and the other parts of it. Um, so that's always uh, an interesting bit of, uh, of work because you often start out with an idea of how you're going to do it and it ends up being something totally different. So um, Leonard was, was a great, great uh, uh, man to work on. Uh, it, it was an honor to, to work on it. I felt privileged to work on it. Um, and I've had the, the extreme pleasure of working on the busts of some remarkable Canadians. So um, here we are, uh, just waiting for Leonard to dry so that he can be put into the, uh, the clay kiln and uh, fired up to 1960 degrees um, as a bisque firing. And then after that, there'll be the, um, the uh, glaze firing. The nerve wracking part. All right, here we go. So the process is long and involved. People, I mean, anyone that goes to see a sculptor or a painter always says, how long did it take you to do this? And, um, you know, you, you sort of want to be honest about it. And, and at times you think, let's see, I spent three months reading books about him and listening to his music and getting a sense of who he was and getting into his head in, in a way and um, and oftentimes the creation of it uh, goes much quicker um, because you have reached a point where you know how you want it to look and you focus on that and uh, and it it seems to to work extremely well so um, so there is no answer to that question because uh, everyone is different. Some are, some don't want to be released from the clay binds. Uh, others are easily released from it because they apparently want to make an, uh, an appearance and they have something to say and and uh, then the epiphany moment uh, comes and uh, and I try to jump in the air and click my heels, most of the time falling on the floor. But uh, other than that, uh, that's the process. And I hope this helps. Uh, uh, the, uh, the creation of it is, uh, is my way of creating it. It's not, uh, every artist is different. And so, um, I just feel thankful that I get to do this. I do it for a living. Um, so it could be a lot worse than what I have to do. Okay. You look good, Leonard. Come on, baby. Success. Beautiful.